Hello everyone, my name is Clay and welcome to Terminally Nerdy's Indie Impressions, where I take a look at independent and small, non-AAA titles, giving you my quick first impressions after at least two hours of playing them, because if it's good enough for Steam refunds, it's good enough for me. And today, I'm going to be looking at uh, a cute little steampunk metroidvania created by, I believe it's called Image and Form? small little dev team. They've made a bunch of games in this Steam World universe, and it's called Steam World Dig 1. So the basic premise of this game is you are a tiny robot named Rusty. And Rusty has been contacted by his uncle, who has now gone missing, and you are going to this small town, which literally at the start has three other robots in it, and you're going to be taking over your uncle's mining operation, basically, and trying to figure out what happened to him. And the game literally starts with you finding this corpse. <laughs> you, you guys are going to see this. This is the beginning of the game, the footage behind you. So you're going to see me find his corpse, take the mining pick off, and go from there. The gameplay is actually fairly simplistic. You will go into a mine and go ever increasingly down. And your objective is to keep digging to locate treasure, to locate these orbs, which are used for upgrades, uh, and to locate rooms that will either have puzzles or sort of Metroid-styled upgrades. Stuff like Super Speed, Super Jump. Uh, there's a couple of other ones that I forget. There's like a, a wall, like a straight shot jump up. There's a double jump. There's a couple of other upgrades. Uh, but basically, that's the entire game. You're just digging ever increasingly down, finding much more expensive loot, and going back upstairs, selling all the loot, and then going back into the mine. Uh, the game is also incredibly short. Now I say, for this show, I'm only going to play a game for at least two hours. If I'm interested, I'll keep going. Well, when I played it, SteamWorld Dig, I kind of lost track of time, and I reached the final boss of the game, and that took me three hours and like 45 minutes. That was it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to rush the game either, I was just following the gameplay loop. I would go in, I would dig, I'd leave, I'd sell stuff. Now. The way you get your upgrades is you either find them in these rooms that will be clearly marked. The game will clearly mark you as your story progression to go to these rooms. There'll be like a red pulse on your map. Uh, but you also sell your metal, which gives you cash, which acts as both the experience points for the town and as actual money. You will then go to one of the vendors, and as you level up your town and sell more stuff, more vendors will show up and they'll have bigger upgrades. Uh, and these vendors will sell you upgrades to your mining pick. Uh, eventually you get a drill, they sell you upgrades for your drill. Eventually you get like a rocket punch, they will sell you upgrades for your rocket punch. They will sell you upgrades for your lamp, because there's a light mechanic, although I never really noticed it and the one time I ran out of light. Nothing seemed to happen except things became very hard to see. <laughs> Wasn't that big a deal, honestly. And, uh... Yeah, it's, it's basically the entire game. There is a story here. You're trying to figure out what the hell happened to your uncle. Eventually, you do figure it out. The final boss, the one boss in the game, is... Well, he's a thing that involves your uncle's, like, brain. and It's really weird. And apparently, there's more stuff that goes into it in SteamWorld Dig 2, which is what I'm going to play next for this. I'm going to do SteamWorld Dig 2. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a cute little fun game. I got it on sale for, I want to say, like, four bucks, because of the Steam of a Steam sale. And I'd say it's worth about five. If it's at ten, I don't think it's worth purchasing. The game is incredibly quick, incredibly short, and while it is enjoyable, when I beat it, I ended up just sitting there going, well, what now? Like, I don't want to replay it. I, I started a new game for the footage here, and while I enjoyed myself, I'm just repeating the same steps I've already done. Even if the levels are procedural, I don't really feel like playing it any further. <laughs> so I'm hoping SteamWorld Dig 2 is an improvement. Supposedly it is. We're going to find out. So if you're looking for a short little Metroidvania uh, and you have a 3DS, it is on the 3DS. It's probably better off there, truth be told, uh, for what it's worth. But again, I wouldn't spend the $10. I'd probably go for 5 like get it on sale or don't get it. So... As always, people, thank you for watching. If you like what I'm doing, feel free to hit the like button. Please subscribe if you want more of these indie videos. Feel free to follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash terminallynerdy. 
basically search Terminally Nerdy in Google and you'll find my website, you'll find my Twitch, you'll find my Twitter, you'll find all of that stuff. Uh, of course, links are all in the description box below if you want to click. Feel free to leave a comment if you've played SteamWorld Dig 1 and if you feel I've not given it the best rating because, again, it's super, super short. You know, tell me your opinion of it. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody, and remember, stay nerdy!